God changed and I am happier and healthier because of it. Now, I know that might be a shocking statement for a lot of you. It would have been for me too, until I went through my spiritual awakening. And I have to really thank people like Joe Dispenza and Dr. Bruce Lipton for this awareness that I now have. Specifically, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who wrote the book, Biology of Belief. If you've never heard of the book, if you've never read the book, I highly recommend it. In the book, Dr. Lipton talks about belief and helps us to understand that belief really is a science. And I began to understand that I didn't really know God at all. What I knew was my beliefs about God based on the things I had heard and been taught and exposed to for most of my life. And in actuality, what I had was a relationship with my beliefs about God rather than an actual relationship with God. Now, again, I know that some of you might hear this and you are going to think this is absolute nonsense. And I understand. And trust me when I tell you, I'm really nervous to make this video. But I also know that there are many of you who are going through your own spiritual awakening. And this video is for you. Let's talk neuroscience, which is the study of the brain. Neuroscience and neuroscientists have proven to us through extensive research that it is actually our subconscious brain that determines our experiences. What the subconscious brain does is it records all of our conversations and our thoughts and our beliefs and our experiences, our emotions and our feelings. And our subconscious brain basically just replays all of those programs and um, those, those tapes, if you will, over and over again, so much so that we believe that the things that are in our subconscious, which we're not really aware of, are the actual truth or fact. And most of us never test our subconscious beliefs. We never, we never examine them. We never think critically about them. We assume that the people who are in our lives that are authority figures are telling us the truth about everything. And so we rarely question or examine anything. I certainly didn't. And as a pastor, a former pastor at least, I can tell you that most of my parishioners didn't either. Now, I want to say this off the top. I was not ever planning to teach things that were not true deliberately. And I don't believe that anybody intends on doing that. It's just that we're born into this world and immediately the programming starts. As soon as we come out of our mama's womb, somebody is in our face ready to teach us some concept or some construct some ideology, some belief that they have. And the same is true about God. Now, many of us, not all of us, but many of us were introduced to a belief about God that caused us to believe that we were separated from God because of sin in our life through some act of unrighteousness or some transgression. Many of us have been exposed to ideologies about God that have convinced us that we are in like never ending danger of eternal um, punishment, separation from God. We've been taught that we are inherently evil and sinful. And what nobody never taught us though, uh, is that the subconscious holds on to those narratives. The subconscious records those narratives. And un we are unawarely making decisions every single day based on those narratives. We're making decisions in our lives every day based on how we perceive ourselves to be according to what we've been taught. So whether it was our parents, whether it was school teachers or friends, whether it was any other authority figure, we have accumulated a set of beliefs about ourselves. And these beliefs dictate the type of decisions we make in our everyday life. And this includes how we feel about God and how we um, can, uh, how we see our relationship with God. And so if we feel like we have to constantly work to secure a relationship with God, if we have beliefs within our subconscious mind that make us believe, we, that make us feel that we have to um, 
always serve and 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 do whatever we can to maintain a relationship with God that would prevent us from eternal punishment, then again, those subconscious beliefs are going to affect the types of decisions that we're making throughout our lives. And so these are things we're not being taught. Now, this is specifically or especially true for little children. If little children were raised in households where they were taught at an early age um, that they were depraved, that they were inherently bad, if they were taught as a child that God is in the clouds, away from them, separate from them, watching them, um, that there was a potential that they could uh, be tormented eternally, um, then these children also have these beliefs recorded into their subconscious. And so they grow up and they make decisions uh, based on these beliefs. And so beliefs are extremely powerful and potent. In fact, there is a theory that um, examines change and how difficult change is because habits are basically beliefs that are hardwired into our subconscious mind. These are beliefs that have been rehearsed for so long that they are almost one with us. They become a part of our DNA and it's really, really hard to move out of that. And so I was one of those people who initially, um, I don't remember uh, the immediate people in my life telling me that God was not good, that God was, was, was a punishing type of God. But honestly, around me in my environment growing up and as a young woman, I didn't really see a lot of evidence that God um, was quote unquote good. Um, and, and that was based on just um, the experiences that I partook in. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of poverty around me, a lot of sickness, a lot of people who just appeared to be unhappy. And um, all of these people, though, still talked about God a lot. So as a young person, I created unconsciously beliefs that said um, God is good equates to suffering, equates to sickness, equates to lack, equates to poverty. And I think a lot of you, if you think about it, you could probably agree to the same thing. We don't do this consciously. Again, this is at our subconscious level, but our subconscious runs about 95% of our day, according to neuroscientists. And so I had this very maladaptive belief about God, and I established my relationship with God based upon those beliefs. So my relationship with God was predicated upon the belief that I was inherently bad, evil, sinful, and that I was separated from God. And there was also um, a, 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 a deflating because there were times that my beliefs um, were created in a way that I felt like God did love me. But there were other times I felt like, mm, I'm not sure if God loves me. And so there was always this vicious cycle of me confessing that I was inherently in error and always trying to do things to appease God and, and ensure that God loved me. And again, I'm not saying this tonight to hurt anyone or to come against anyone's faith. I'm going somewhere with this video. And I think everybody's going to be blessed by it if you allow yourself to just listen. I'm really talking about the biology of belief and how belief is so powerful and how our beliefs are hardwired into our brain and how our brain is literally responsible for the outcomes that we get in life, whether they're successful outcomes or failures, the brain plays a significant role in the outcomes that we achieve in our life. And our beliefs are, um, are communicating with our brain all the time. And our beliefs are telling our brain what kind of neurological pathways to create or not create for us. In their book, How God Changes the Brain, I'm gonna link it in the description, um, Dr. Andrew Newberg and Mark Robert Wallman talk extensively about their research and their work. And they've seen consistently that the more we think about God, it changes the neural circuitry in our brain. 
And it doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter if you are a religious person or even an agnostic or an atheist. According to these researchers, the more you think about God, the more you ponder about God, you're literally changing your neural circuitry, right? And so what does that mean? That means that the way your brain um, is designed to function is going to be altered based on what your beliefs are about God. So your brain is creating pathways um, based on whatever your beliefs are about God. They even go on to say that if we see God as a vindictive, punishable, um, wrathful God, we'll sort of act accordingly, right? Um, they also talk about in the book that um, God or the belief in God is really built in our brain and that depending on what information our beliefs are communicating with our brain, we will create that variation um, or that imagery of God in our brain and we will begin to act accordingly. And I can attest to that because I was in a, at one point, especially when I became, you know, an adult, I wasn't really, I wasn't raised to fear God. I wasn't raised to, to see God as angry like that. My mama really just um, said, I thought a beautiful example of what faith looked like. But as I became an adult and went on my own spiritual journey, I became associated with, with, with people um, who had a different perspective of God. And they, the more I sat and listened to their perceptions of God, and then I would read the Bible and I would actually see what they were saying, which now I understand even that because, you know, the study, understanding the brain is so important in helping us understanding our spiritual experiences. And our brain will um, predict things based on what we've programmed it to believe. And so um, this is why there are some people who have faith in God and, and all of their visions and all of their spiritual experiences are beautiful. There's there's never any experience of uh, anything evil or wicked. There's no ideology or concept of um, evil or, or, or entities or spirits that are evil. There are people who just have the most beautiful images of God. Um, in their mind, in their brain, and, and even in their spiritual interaction, they just don't interact with God in a way that is um, damaging or harmful or fear-based. Um, that's not my testimony, at least it wasn't until now. I, again, was uh, introduced to a different variation of faith where there was constant talk about the, you know, the angry God, the wrathful God, the judgment of God. And then, of course, people would show me scriptures to sort of substantiate where they were getting this from. And I slowly began to um, assume some of those ideologies and rehearse them enough so that I actually created neurological pathways and beliefs for that and began to experience that in my everyday life. My everyday life began to change. My, my experiences began to change based on my belief in God. And so it was it was going through the spiritual awakening journey um, when I began to understand um, the concepts of um, the subconscious and how we're wired through beliefs um, and how our beliefs are so powerful and become so factual, um, whether they're real or not. I began to understand that, you know, for years, I'm talking hundreds of years human beings, probably thousands of years, honestly, um, but human beings have always, human beings have always tried to predict what God is. Human beings have always projected their beliefs, their convictions, their ideologies, their cultures onto a blank canvas and created gods. And so when I began to study not just religions, which I studied a lot of religions, but again, I began to really study psychology to study the mind and, and human behavior. And I began to study neuroscience to study the brain, the, the nervous system. And I began to understand how we really are just one system. As human beings, we are multidimensional, but we're one system. We are a mind, we are a body. 
we're spirit, but we're all in that same one system. And all those aspects of us, mind, spirit, and body, communicate with each other all the time. And we are influencing each aspect or dimension of ourselves all the time. And so I did something really, really difficult. I, I, I made the decision to, to pursue um, this research in religion. And it was, I was so fascinated by the things I was uncovering. I made the decision to pursue um, a deeper understanding of our, of, of our mind. The Bible tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And I really wanted transformation because I was experiencing um, a lot of depression and sadness and anxiety, um, just not very happy in the faith that I was practicing, in the in the way that I understood God. It was just not um, a very healthy relationship at all. Although, um, because of the power of um, belief and because of epigenetics and how our environment can influence our behaviors and our beliefs, I normalized. I normalized this very unhealthy relationship with God. And so I wasn't able to identify it in those days. I was never able to identify that I had an unhealthy relationship with God. I thought it was completely normal to struggle, to be in lack, to suffer, to hurt, um, to go through. I thought that was normal because I was in um, I was in an environment where it was normalized. Again, this is why I think it's so important for us as people of faith to, to not be afraid to study the sciences because the sciences can really help us understand human behavior within religious cultures. And so I uh, just got to a point where the exhaustion and the fatigue, um, the emotional and mental distress uh, just got to be too much. And I was just curious. I wanted to know if there was another way to understand God. I wanted to know if there was another way to be in relationship with God. And when I began the process of studying the various sciences, epigenetics, um, again, the science that helps us understand how influential our environment and our genetics are on us, that we can inherit the beliefs and the traumas um, and the behaviors of our ancestors um, up to five to seven years before us and that we also can be influenced to change our behaviors based upon our environment, the people that we are around, the, um, the, the, the observations, the things that we're observing around us. Those things can influence our behaviors as well. I began to study deeply, you know, again, psychology, really understanding the different psychological theories that explain human behavior. And even the psychological theories that explained human behavior within the context or the, of religion. Uh, again, studying neuroscience and understanding um, our brain, which is the most powerful organ in our body, and, and connecting all of that to the various religious traditions that I had studied. And I began to understand why there's so many different religions. There's 4,000 religions globally that we know of. And even within the Christian faith, which is the faith that I practice, there's over 40,000 of those. And when I was practicing that variation of the faith, I had to talk about my money because my money was real funny. <laughs> my money was real funny. My relationships were unhealthy. Um, my, um, my health, my mental health specifically, was not healthy at all. Um, and I, again, this is my journey. This is my experience. You may not experience any of this and your story could be completely different. These are the things that I experienced. I just remember the entire time practicing that variation of the faith as a young woman, just not being happy, like internally happy, not having knowledge of self. Um, I just remember always struggling and always feeling that I needed to serve God because um, I just never felt like I was doing enough. I never felt like I was serving God enough. And um, I just remember, you know, not being able to always have the amount of money and resources that I desired for my family. Um, and I just couldn't understand it. Um, but I understand it now. Once I went through my awakening and I studied all these sciences and um, studied the sciences in conjunction with the religion. And, and I put, you know, many, I put many of the books that I was reading and the articles I was studying, I juxtaposed those with the Bible and I really wanted to make sense of everything. And I understood that 
Your beliefs really do impact, influence, and shape your reality. Um, your beliefs, which are hardwired and stored in your brain, um, are what's controlling your outcomes, your decisions. So you're not even going to have the capacity to um, have deep, lasting relationships if in your brain you have a belief that not only you are inherently evil and sinful, but if you believe that everybody else in the world is inherently evil and sinful, you're not going to be able to create those deep connections that humans are supposed to create and have. We're supposed to share the human experience, but it's hard to do that when you have maladaptive negative beliefs about yourself and other people in the world. And when you are in these types of belief systems where there's a construct of good versus evil, devil versus God, you know, the kingdom of God versus this evil world, you're going to get up every single day and every place you go, you're going to see the world as this evil place. Um, and then you add that to a belief in a malevolent being um, who has the power to just at will intrude um, in your life and and disrupt your well-being. It is really difficult to have a life of wealth, health, abundance, and peace with those beliefs ruling your, your experiences every single day. And so once I began to understand that, I went through the very grueling but necessary and, and beautiful journey of neuroplasticity. During that neuroplasticity work, changing my beliefs, changing my beliefs. And it was not easy all the time because these beliefs were hardwired deep in the crevices of my brain. And so um, I had to make some very radical decisions. Um, I had to make some radical decisions to leave the religious system that I loved, uh, or at least I thought I loved and had been a part of all my life. Um, I had to uh, separate myself from the ministry that I loved. Uh, I've been in ministry and I loved ministry. I love serving people. I still do because I'm a, I'm a humanitarian. But I understood, again, the power of environment. I understood the power of epigenetics. I understood that my environment was influencing my behavior and my decisions because I gradually saw myself changing. I saw myself changing, y'all. I saw my behaviors changing. I saw me engaging in beliefs and behaviors and practices that just were not aligned with who I really am and the core of my being. Um, and, I, and, and, and I could, I, it, it was almost like I was having um, an out-of-body out of experience. That's how I felt. Like I really felt like I was not in my body because it was like I was watching myself from a remote location, you know, engaging in conversations and behaviors that just didn't feel like it was me. You know, nothing crazy, but just just my ideologies about things, my beliefs about, you know, my own abilities, my own um, capabilities, um, just the sadness that I always felt, um, just the anxiety that I always felt, um, the pressure that I always felt to be this perfect leader. All of those things resulted in me denying myself and I really was out of my body because I could not be myself because I was constantly feeling the need to be perfect in, in the presence of other people I needed the, the approval of other people because I wanted to be pleasing to God because of the because of the belief system that I had about God and all of that caused me to deny myself for so many years and I just accepted the bare minimum. I accepted mediocre because in my mind, in my brain, I believed that I was supposed to be here on the earth just to serve God. And that should be the only thing I focused on and that um, anything else that I desired, I would get it, you know, in the afterlife. Again, this is my experience. I am not trying to, you know, say that you should feel this way. I hope that you can respect what I'm saying. And so I had a choice to make to either change my beliefs altogether and, and not believe in God. And I knew that wasn't going to work because I, I've always known in my spirit that, that there is a God. There is a higher power 
right? I've always known that. Um, now, what I was going to find out during my spiritual awakening was that I was going to have to be radical about changing um, and redefining my ideology about God and how I understood God. Because that was going to determine if I was going to be able to recreate a healthy, abundant, peaceful, happy relationship with God. And that was going to be a lot of subconscious work because the subconscious is where all of this has to take place. Because the subconscious, again, is filled with all of these narratives about yourself and how you think God sees you. And so it took some work. But over, the, over time, I was able to rewire my beliefs. I was able to rewire my brain and change those habitual beliefs about myself, about other people, about our world, and about God. And now I have a healthy, happy, abundant relationship with God. I feel good in my body. I feel like I'm back in my body. I feel like I'm back in my mind. I have that peace that I used to have long before I started practicing um, faith in a very maladaptive way. My business um, suffers so much through um, this belief system that I had, accepting that I just needed to be broke. Accepting that God didn't want me to be wealthy or prosperous or abundant until I got to heaven. That I should just focus on, you know, serving God. So a lot of all of the belief systems that I had about God had to be identified and confronted. And so I'm glad that I did that. And it did not come without a cost. I lost relationships. I lost clients. I experienced a dark night of the soul. I experienced, you know, a lot of online bullying and shame and attacks. But what I gained was priceless. First of all, I gained a newfound relationship with myself. I was able to begin the beautiful journey of, of, of just mastery of self-love, mastery of self-acceptance, mastery of self-compassion, mastery of self-empathy. And let me tell you, when you start loving yourself radically, when you start accepting yourself radically, when you start approving of yourself unconditionally, you're going to lose some people because there are some people that they cannot survive unless you are miserable. There are some people who are only in your life because you have shown them the most miserable, loathsome version of yourself. And like my mama used to say, misery loves company. And so you're going to experience a shedding of relationships. You're going to experience a shedding of a lot of things as you go through this journey. If this is, if this is a journey you feel that you're called to go through, this might not be your journey and that's okay. But I also gained this beautiful knowledge of God. And I began to understand and forgive humans because humans do what humans do. And God is such a mysterious and powerful and beautiful reality that it is a natural inclination that all humans have to wonder about God, to try to understand God. And so what humans do is humans fill in the gaps. We fill in the blanks. If we don't really understand something, we just create a story around it. And I began to realize that this is what happened when it came down to God. And so I went on this journey to know God for myself. And I began to understand that I was never lost, that I was never separated from God, that I was not inherently bad, inherently wicked, that God loved me just the way I was, that I am created in the very image and the very likeness of God, that God was within me, that I was eternally safe because I was one with, with God, with the creator. And when I began to practice knowing this, when I began to practice this new belief that I got from myself, that I got from within, nobody, nobody told me this, nobody taught this to me. This is something 
that I was able to understand on my own. And this is a beautiful power that all of us have. We all have the power to do this because this is how we were created. And so once I was able to reconnect to the eternal knowledge and the eternal truth that God is a beautiful presence that lives within me and that lives everywhere all the time, it just opened my eyes. God truly is omnipresent everywhere all the time, but not as an angry, controlling father that's looking at us all the time. No, as a beautiful, beautiful presence. And so when I changed that belief internally inside of me about God, God changed. God changed. God changed and became more alive within me. And so as my internal realities of God changed, my external realities also changed because I was able to identify God everywhere in all situations. I no longer worried about whether a situation was good or bad, wrong or right. I saw God in everything and I saw God in everybody. And my job was to look for the lessons in every experience that I had. My assignment was to look for an opportunity to grow and to evolve. And that's what I began to do. And that changed my internal compass. What we call the Holy Spirit. It changed as I evolved into this awareness of what God truly was. The Holy Spirit or that, that, that presence, that eternal omnipresence within me, it began to help me to experience new realities externally. What do I mean by that? Business growth, increase, profits, revenue increased. I felt better. I felt happier. I felt at peace. Because God changed. God changed. God changed because my perception, my understanding, and my belief in God, about God, changed. And then I was able to see. My brain was able to create new neurological pathways about God. Because here's the, here's the neuroscience of God. You can only perceive God the way your brain predicts God to be. And that's going to be based on your current beliefs, your past experiences, your past beliefs. Your brain can't go any further than your beliefs. And so if you have a hardwired belief that God is angry, unjust, vengeful, punishable, or punishing, and you're not willing to change that compass, you're not willing to change that programming, then God will never be anything different to you. God will never change for you. But for those of us who were brave enough to move that needle, to move that needle, to move the goalpost beyond the self-limitations that were imposed upon us, and we were brave enough to get back to Eden and live on top of the world, to know God for ourselves. We are the ones who can boldly and unapologetically say, God will change. God will change. When you allow your beliefs to change, God will change. I am so grateful for this newfound relationship with God. It brings me so much peace, so much joy, so much health, so much healing. And I was really scared and nervous to make this video on my YouTube channel because I try not to bring religion into this space. But I feel like our faith, it is a part of who we are. 
no matter what our niche is. For those of us who are spiritual, we understand that our faith and our connectedness to God can never be separate from who we are. As a businesswoman, as an entrepreneur, God is a part of my business model. Faith is a part of my business model. And my experience, my journey, it is a part of my business model. These are things that I will teach my clients and my students and my customers. Because I know for myself, and I believe you will know too, that there is a realm that we have not yet tapped into. There is a peace in God that truly does surpass all understanding. And I don't believe that you have to suffer and be in warfare and be in lack and be in poverty and be in sickness to prove that you're in relationship with God. God will change when you change. Thank you for listening to this. I want to know your thoughts in the comments. Good, bad, or indifferent. And even if your comments are hateful, I want to know what they are. And if nobody even watches this video, I'm proud of myself for making this content tonight. It's almost 1 a.m. and I just could not go to bed until I got this out of my spirit. So if nobody else watches this video, and it's very possible that nobody's going to see this, but I'll see it. And I'll know that I did it. I'll know that I was brave enough to stand in my power, to live out my truth, to speak my truth, and not be afraid. Why did I do that? How was I able to do that? Because God is with me. God is in me. Therefore, I should not be afraid. Do me a favor. If you have not done so, please subscribe to this channel. My name is Dr. Vanessa R. Brooks, and I appreciate you so much for being here. Give the video a like. All right, and I will see you the next time. Grace and peace. Peace and blessings. God is good.